What's up guys, welcome back to my channel, the number one place for data scientists, data engineers, and machine learning engineers. In this video, I really want to answer a few questions on interview preparation that came from one of you guys. And those questions are, how do I know if I'm good enough for an on-site interview, and which part I should improve? I thought those were really great questions and I totally understand why you prepare for your interviews, you are immersing yourself into absorbing different knowledge, brushing up your skills, and maybe figure out how to find time to prepare if you have a full-time job or other responsibilities. So you know that you are making incremental progress, but you don't really know how much preparation is enough and whether you are ready for the interview or not. That's why if you're someone who resonates with this message, who is currently preparing for interviews and wants to get a clear sense on if you are ready for interviews or not, and where to improve, then I hope you keep on watching. Now, to kickstart this video, I'm gonna introduce you an efficient method, actually the most efficient way that you could use to evaluate if you are ready or not, as well as find out where you can improve. I'm sure that most of you know about it, but maybe you haven't fully leveraged it to fast track your interview preparation, or you are on the fence and wondering whether you should do it or not. And the method I was talking about is doing mock interviews. A mock interview mirrors an actual job interview. It asks similar questions that you will be facing during a real interview. Of course, the questions you will be asked during a mock interview will be different from the real interview, but you could get a clear sense on your current skills level and if you are ready for the actual interview or not. The main benefit of doing mock interviews is to evaluate your knowledge levels and find out areas for improvement. This is very important. With this information, you can adjust your interview preparation strategy accordingly. For example, if you did a great job in a mock interview, it gives you the confirmation that you are ready for the actual interview, and it will give you confidence during the actual interview. If you did not do well, it's also great, because you know it before the actual interview. Then you still have time to learn more and do more preparation, and maybe doing another mock interview to improve further. On top of this, another benefit of doing a mock interview is that you can also improve your interview skills, such as how to express yourself, how to present your ideas, how to present your answers, how to perform under stress, and how to interact with interviewer. Those are very important skills, and believe it or not, you will be evaluated based on how well you do in those aspects in the actual interview. It may sound trivial that you need to care about those soft skills when you interview for a technical position, such as a data scientist position. But I'm telling you right now, as someone who has interviewed many people and also helped many people with mock interviews, the fact is many people fail the interview due to lacking those soft skills. Let me explain. Sometimes you think you fully understand some technical terms, but you might not be able to explain them clearly. For example, you think you know what the p-value is and what the confidence interval is, but when it comes to explaining those concepts to others during an interview, your explanation might not be clear or intuitive enough. This will give the interviewer an impression that you are not fully understanding those concepts. By doing a mock interview, you will get feedback on whether your communication is clear, whether your answers are structured and organized, so that you can make improvements on those areas. Now, I want to share with you a personal experience. There was a time I was preparing for an on-site interview, and the first round was a presentation. During my communication with the recruiter, I learned that the presentation has a heavy weight, and it's a big determinator to pass an interview. So I took it very seriously. I presented my project to five people before the actual interview. I was able to get valuable feedback from each of them and improve my presentation a lot in the process. Even though the actual content of the presentation did not change that much, I improved a lot on my presentation and interview skills, such as how I structure the presentation, how I interact with the interviewer, and how I answer follow-up questions. So my presentation turned out to be very good during the actual on-site interview, and the hiring manager told me that I was hired right after my presentation. So I highly, highly recommend doing a mock interview or a few mock interviews before an on-site interview to evaluate if you are ready or not. And based on the feedback you get from the interviewer, you could further improve your answers, your presentation, or communication skills. 
Now, I have explained to you the benefits of doing mock interviews. You might feel that you need one right now. However, it's not beneficial for every person in every stage in the preparation process. So next, I want to talk about why it's a good time to do a mock interview. The one piece of advice I have for you is you should only do a mock interview after you've done the interview preparation. When you have done the preparation and you have the foundation, you could then focus on presenting yourself during the mock interview. Then figure out how you can improve those areas. Essentially, you should treat it like an actual interview and you don't go to an interview without any preparation, right? I know there are people who want to fully rely on mock interviews for interview preparation. They feel they could replace systematic interview preparation with mock interviews. They want to gain technical knowledge during mock interviews and they will rely on the interviewer to give them answers during those sessions. For example, instead of spending time learning fundamental metric and A-B testing knowledge, they want to rely on the interviewer to teach them fundamental knowledge and how to answer those questions during mock interviews. I would say this is a complete misuse of mock interviews. The reason is that if you treat a mock interview like a Q&A session and every time you don't know the answer, you expect the interviewer to help you, to teach you, essentially you treat it as a one-on-one -on -one teaching session and each time you learn a little bit of knowledge. It will take many, many mock interviews for you to really gain all the knowledge you need to be ready for the actual interview. It becomes very inefficient to prepare for interviews. Time and time again, I have noticed that people who get results and land job offers faster are the ones who are well prepared for the mock interview and treat it seriously. Those are the people who end up reaping the benefits of mock interviews. In summary, doing a mock interview is not about improving your technical skills. It's not a time to learn technical skills or gain technical knowledge. The goal, again, is to evaluate your current skill level and figure out where you could improve. It means that if you just get started on interview preparation and you feel you still have lots of things to learn, don't schedule a mock interview yet. So with that out of the way, I want to share with you guys how to do a mock interview so that you can get the maximum value out of it. First of all, you should be ready for it mentally, which means you should treat it like a real interview rather than a fake interview. Your attitude determines how much value you get from a mock interview. Secondly, you choose a type of interview you want to do a mock interview on. Personally, I'd suggest focusing on one type of interview at a time. I don't think it's helpful to cover many things in one session because it's unlikely for you to get in-depth feedback if one session covers many different topics, such as a combination of statistics, metric, SQL, and machine learning. Instead, if you focus on one topic, the interviewer will have a more comprehensive understanding of where you are and how you can improve. Afterwards, it comes to the core question, who could do it for you? Now, if you have data scientist friends who have more experience than you and could provide valuable feedback for you, you are in luck. You can ask your friends to be the interviewer for you. But if you don't have friends who are in data science, I'd strongly suggest you hire a professional who has more knowledge in data science than you to be the interviewer for you so that they can give you useful feedback on how you perform and how to improve. If you ask a friend who has less knowledge than you or who is in a completely different industry to be the interviewer for you, it won't be very helpful because they might not even know whether your answers make sense. It's hard for them to provide an objective evaluation and give useful feedback for you. So once you find someone who's willing to do the mock interview for you, you then ask the interviewer to prepare a few questions based on your choice of interview type. So you only know the type of interview, but not the exact questions you will be asked. Next, you need to ask for permission to record the mock interview session and ask the interviewer to give you feedback afterwards. The feedback you get will be super helpful for you to improve. That's why I recommend people who have more knowledge than you and could provide feedback for you to do the mock interview. Other than the feedback you get from the interviewer, I also suggest you listen to the recording and do a self-evaluation. You will have a better understanding on which part you did great and which part you did not do a good job and figure out where you can improve further. 
Now, you guys might be wondering, how many mock interviews do you need before the actual interview? Well, it works the best when you do at least one mock interview for each type of interview that will occur during the on-site interview. For example, if you have five rounds of interviews such as behavioral interview, SQL interview, code interview, case interview, and a presentation, then you could do one mock interview for each of them, so five in total. This will largely increase your chance of getting an offer once you've done the mock interview and improve based on the feedback from the interviewer. However, I also completely understand doing many mock interviews will cost you time and money. If you are constrained by either of them, I'd suggest you do mock interviews for those type of interviews that require more soft skills and less technical skills, such as case interview, presentation, and behavioral interview. The first reason I recommend focusing on less technical interviews is that in those interviews, communication skill is very important and can be a determining factor of you getting a thumbs up from the interviewer. In fact, most people who reach out to me to get help on interview preparation were rejected due to those less technical interviews. By doing mock interviews on those types of interviews, you could get an evaluation of your communication skills and make a quick adjustments and improvements on them. For example, if your interviewer observes that you start answering questions without even clarifying the question, it's easy for you to fix it and do better in the actual interview. So try to prioritize them when you consider doing mock interviews. The second reason that I recommend focusing on less technical interview is that for technical interviews, such as coding and SQL, you could do it by yourself. For example, using an online platform such as LeetCode to set a timer and see if you can finish it on time. This could serve as an alternative to mock interviews. That's why I recommend you guys doing mock interviews on those interviews that require more soft skills. Now, at this point in this video, you have learned a lot about the best way to evaluate your skill levels and assess if you are ready for the on-site or not. But if you feel that you are not getting the results you want, or if you are not getting the results as soon as you want, it might be due to a few mistakes that you are making, but you are not aware of them. As that being said, I want you to hit the notification bell because in the next video, I will talk about the top mistakes that I have observed people making in their job search process so that you can avoid those mistakes and be efficient to land job offers without feeling overwhelmed or discouraged. So again, guys, I want you to hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. In the meantime, while you wait for the video to be public, I also want you to check out these two videos right here. I talk a lot about data science interviews, data engineering interviews, and machine learning interviews, especially if you are someone who is actively looking for jobs in the tech industry. As always, guys, I appreciate you for watching this video. Stay tuned. I will see you soon.